What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Since it's been a while since I did any type of introduction, my name's Dave, I'm a photographer from the Bay Area. If this is your first time, thanks for being here. If you are a returning viewer, thanks for being part of the community. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe and hopefully you won't unsubscribe by the end of the video. For me, this whole year has been about my transition out of the Sony ecosystem into shooting Leica, specifically the Leica M cameras. And if you've followed along this entire year, you've been following this journey as I've tried different cameras and tried to find my system and tried to find my approach to shooting with the M cameras, which have been revolutionary for me because it's changed the experience of shooting and it's honestly brought a ton of life just back into my creativity. And that that's just been incredible and invaluable. And I know many of you are on a similar path, which is why you watch my videos, because you're a photographer that's shooting on a Canon or a Sony or a Nikon or something that is, you know, a bit more modern and very advanced in its feature set. And you're asking yourself about what it would be like to move over to something like a Leica M. Today, I wanna to talk you through the things that I do that I didn't realize when I first got my Leica M were going to be so critical as part of the experience of shooting. The philosophical approach to shooting with Leica is a bit different than shooting with a camera like this. This is my original Sony camera I got several years ago. This is a Sony a7R III. When I moved over to Sony from Canon, I just went all in on this camera. This was their flagship art camera at the time, and it has just been fantastic. I've taken many great images with this camera, stuff I'm really proud of. Eventually, this camera was destroyed in a car accident. Insurance replaced it with a a7R IV, but I actually got this one completely repaired. You can watch the video above all about that whole thing. And when the a A7R5 came out, B&H gave me their creator pricing, which was like too good to pass up. So I grabbed the A7R5 and it's a fantastic camera, but it was that camera that made me realize I needed to leave the Sony system behind. Because when I was doing my first jobs with that camera, and even some of my personal stuff, when I first took the camera out, it was almost effortless in every way. I didn't feel like much of an artist anymore. I felt like I was good at going places and I could go find cool places to be, but the camera did all the work in capturing great images. The autofocus is unreal. The sensor has so many stops of dynamic range. It didn't matter if I over or underexposed, it, it just didn't matter anymore. The camera is such an advanced camera. It's like having a computer with a lens attached. And I began to realize that for the last several years, I've been relying more and more and more on the camera body to do the work that I used to enjoy doing. I used to enjoy the imperfect shots or the act of shooting and figuring out how to get just the greatest thing out of my camera and lens. Because back when there were more limitations in photography, we had to work a little harder. Today's RAW files are so flexible in any system that it's almost difficult, I even wanna say, to get the shot completely wrong. In the earliest days of learning to shoot manual, you know, many, many, many years ago at this point, it was all about getting that exposure triangle right and making compromises with the ISO or making compromises with the shutter or making compromises with the aperture to make sure I got the exposure correct. Today, I feel like on these modern systems, there is just so much forgiveness on all those things. Maybe not the shutter, but there's just so much forgiveness. For me, it almost made photography not as fun. When I got the Leica Q2, the experience began to evolve, but I didn't realize how far it was going to evolve until I got the M. All that intro to say, this is how I approach shooting the M, and it's different than how I did it first. And here's the big thing. If you went out today and you're coming from Sony, Canon, Fuji, Nikon, and you're used to shooting this, these modern systems and you get a Leica M, you're probably thinking, okay, I need to shoot fully manual as I've always done. I need to make sure that I'm balancing the shutter and the aperture and the ISO to get the right exposure. So in my earliest days of shooting the M, I was twisting the dial. I was popping the ISO ring up and spinning it around. I was constantly moving that aperture, just trying to get everything right. Doing so, I could not have been more wrong. The experience of shooting a Leica M is about simplicity. I have fired off tens of thousands of images this year across my Leica M cameras that I've 
gone through this year. It's funny, I'm on my third one of the year, but the last one for many years. And after tens of thousands of images, I can tell you that I think I've dialed in a system that works. So let's start by talking about the philosophical approach to shooting with the Leica M. And by the way, this is all personal preference stuff and you might have a totally different philosophy and system and if so, rock on. But this is my approach and as someone that's come from the modern systems, this would have been helpful for me to hear early on. Leica is about simplicity. It's about not overthinking all of the things you have to do to get the image. It's just about being present with the camera and taking a risk and firing off that shutter. For that reason, shooting fully manual really isn't necessary. In fact, if I wanted to shoot fully manual on every image or every change in the scenario, I would probably just still be shooting my Sony system. When you first pick up a Leica to shoot it, obviously you're going to set your aperture for the desired look you want. If you want that shallow depth of field or if you want that long throw of focus, you pick what works for you. But when it comes to the shutter in ISO, I always have one of those in automatic. More times than not, I'm shooting it with the shutter on automatic. I'm setting the ISO where I want it, and I've got the aperture obviously set, and I'm walking around and just shooting automatic on the shutter. Now, there's a time where that isn't true though, because a grainy, sharp photo is a better photo, in my opinion, than a slow shutter, blurry photo that's completely clean of any grain or noise. So if I'm in lighting where the shutter is going to be too slow, I will put the camera at the shutter speed, which I know will be tack sharp, and I will change the ISO to automatic to make sure I have enough light hitting the sensor. So philosophically, I'm not shooting fully manual anymore, and I haven't really all year. I am mostly shooting with the shutter on automatic with my ISO defined, unless there is a lighting need where I need to get the shutter to stay nice and fast and I can alter the ISO into automatic to make sure it is performing how I want. And that is philosophically how I shoot the Leica. It's easy to overthink shooting Leica if you come from something as complicated of a menu as Sony, all the settings and all the things you can change and then you're you're flipping around your shutter, your aperture, your, you're constantly moving your hands all over the camera. Again, philosophically, this is just meant to be a different experience. And so ultimately, it's about simplicity. It's about not overthinking the experience of shooting your photos and getting your best work because you want to be the artist, you don't want to be a technician. If I was making a new playlist for this channel, I would call it Someone Needs to Hear This and I would file this video in it because I have a feeling you might be overthinking the Leica camera or you're thinking about getting a Leica and you are doing your research to find out if it's an overly complicated camera. It's not. It's actually the opposite of everything you may have experienced. It's all about that shutter press it's, and getting that composition just exactly how you want it. And ultimately, that's what's fun about photography. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe and all the algorithm things that help this channel grow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.